Hi there again, campers. George Durkee with uh, another lesson for GIS and making maps for Columbia College. And this is video two using coordinates in ArcGIS Explorer. And I think on the assignment, I said I was also gonna cover uh, GPS tracks, but let's make this one a little bit shorter and I will just do uh, coordinates. And uh, partway through this exercise, uh, keep a sharp lookout because there will be a homework assignment uh, that'll be due next Tuesday. It's short, it's easy, and I will also post the assignment uh, on, uh, on the Canvas page. So I've opened uh, ArcGIS Explorer here and uh, show you a few quick things and then we'll get into coordinates. Uh, with luck, you've already opened it and played around with it a little bit. One of the first things you'll do, which I show on my introductory uh, ARC Explorer uh, video, is go to base maps and choose a base map type. And I cycle through all of those. Uh, they all have uh, different uses. And uh, uh, I tend to use the US Topo one, um, but you'll find that if you want to just quickly get the terrain out there, the light gray canvas is a pretty light map in terms of bandwidth uh, to use, and it'll have uh, place names on it. You can sort of orient yourself. So if you have slow bandwidth, uh, that's often a, uh, a good map to get into the area you, you want to uh, work in. And then if you need imagery, go ahead and choose either imagery or imagery with labels, but I'm sticking with uh, US Topo Maps. And this is the, well, okay, I switched it slightly. Anyway, this is the full world view. And if you ever get to a point where you need to access the entire world map uh, down here on your navigation bar, there's a little button here that says full extent and you can zoom all the way out. And if you start twisting things around and you need to orient back to north, uh, this will this will orient you back to north. And again, play around with the tools here. You know, you can, uh, uh, you can, uh, well, I won't do any good here. Uh, anyway, you can, you can change the orientation and uh, so on. That's especially useful, of course, if you're using the, uh, the 3D, uh, uh, feature of Arc Explorer. Now, one of the uh, useful tools here is the find command or find uh, feature. And you can find features both by coordinates uh, and by place name. So, for instance, if I enter uh, San Francisco, California, and then hit enter and I get several choices. Uh, one says California, United States. So that's a pretty good guess. So if you double click that, it'll zoom in to San Francisco. Let's, we're in downtown San Francisco there. Zoom out just a little bit. Let's change the map. I don't really like that. Uh, let's go down here. Let's try this topographic, see what happens. Takes a few seconds for it to load. Well, okay, stick with that. And then uh, when you, so you can do that for anywhere. Let's uh, let's put in, uh, well, let's put in Columbia campus, Columbia College, Sonora, California. And there we are. And uh, so let's get rid of all those. We have to do a little X to, uh, to uh, get rid of your previous searches and find commands. And for coordinates, uh, you want to set it for the coordinate type you'll be working in. And if you read the chapter on coordinates in the book, or if you watched the video, um, you'll know the s several different types of coordinates and their, and their general uses. Um, so 
you go to display and then there's coordinates and there's a drop down and then you can choose the coordinate type you'll work in. So let's start out with uh, decimal degrees. That's a pretty easy one. And then we'll, let's stick with Columbia College Sonora. And notice that it puts a little marker on the map there. And I right click and I say move to map. And now we go down here to table of contents. Right now I've got three, uh, tabs open. I have find, I have measure, and I have contents. And you can also open those from the top uh, toolbars if, if they're not appearing on your, uh, on your um, map right now. So, so I've, got a, uh, I've got a marker there for Columbia College. And, uh, and I right click and I go to properties. And there we are, it gives me the longitude and latitude. So minus 120 degrees, three, four, six, zero, nine, eight, eight, seven uh, is the longitude and 34 point, uh, et cetera, is the latitude. Now, if I change that to, let's go to degrees, minutes, seconds, and I right click, and again, properties, and it now gives me a longitude of 120 degrees, 35, no, my glasses aren't doing very well, 23 minutes and five seconds west, 38 degrees, uh, one minute, uh, 42 seconds north. Uh, and as I say in the uh, uh, coordinate video or in the book, you can also have the notation as minus 120 degrees, et cetera, and then 38 degrees in the the plus, the positive is assumed. And uh, then there's a couple of other ways to do uh, UTM. And so you need to know the, the UTM zones for uh, this particular area. Um, so if you go to more and you go down here to uh, UTM and and this is a projected coordinate system. So that is, it's a, it's a grid of some sort imposed on uh, the surface of the earth. And uh, you, if, if, you're, if you're working in an area, like I said, you do need to know uh, the UTM zone. And to, to do that, you can actually just go online and uh, uh, you can get, uh, uh, UTM grid and narrow it down. Uh, get a get an image and narrow it down to the area you want, and it'll tell tell you the uh, UTM zone you're in. For California, there's only two. Uh, there is uh, UTM zone 10, which is Sonora, uh, and uh, up to just a little bit west of Pinecrest, and then after that, it's zone 11. So. Most of California is actually Zone 11, uh, and and uh, but but the upper, or the northern part of it is Zone 10. Anyway, uh, so I would choose uh, Zone 10 in this particular case, and OK, and then you just go back, you right click, and you'd you'd find out um, the the coordinates from. The feature that, that, that's marked. Another way to find coordinates is to go to find. Let's lock that in place. And uh, no, I'm sorry. We go to measure. There we go. Let's lock that in place. And notice I've got all three open now. And you go to measure. And there's a little uh, point tool here. Click the map to find the coordinate information about a point. And so let's go into the middle of San Diego Reservoir and click it, and it gives us an X value of 729.122.75, and a Y value, a latitude of 4214384. Is that right? Um, my eyes aren't all that good. Anyway, you guys can probably read it better than I can. And note that it says NAD83, which is the datum, and UTM zone 10N. And we can add that to the map. And uh, 
we already have it there, but in the properties, uh, it tells you the same thing, the XY values. Um, now, it will also happen that a person will have a USGS paper map and they will read off the coordinates or write them down, uh, the coordinates uh, from that paper map. Most all USGS paper maps, they're unfortunately not producing them anymore. I think, could be wrong, but I think the last series was 1983, though there's probably been some updates since then. Anyway, most of them are in NAD 1927. Now there's a difference between NAD 27 and NAD 83. And so to find that point, email, to find that point, in, someone reads it to you in NAD 1927, uh, A, you wanna make sure you ask them what the datum is. And if they look at the bottom of the map, it'll say uh, datum 1927. Uh, and so then you set your uh, display type, a coordinate display type to the same zone, but you choose NAD 1927. And so zone 10, and we hit okay. And so then you just enter the coordinates uh, uh, the same way here, we'll, we'll copy these. And we'll paste them in again under find. And I have just made a classic mistake, although I, I'll be honest, I made it uh, uh, kind of on purpose. Um, the coordinates here uh, are, are um, put in in uh, YX or it, copied and pasted uh, latitude, uh, longitude. But in fact, um, when you enter it, it's expecting the correct order to be longitude and latitude. Oops, everybody hang on. No adjustment of your set is necessary. And so the former got me into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So let's try this again. And zoom, we are back um, at Columbia. Uh, now one of the questions in the exercise is going to have you find a coordinate set in uh, 19, NAD 27. So, uh, so pay attention here on, on how I did that sequence. And uh, let's see what other fun stuff. Um, oh, let's, let's just quickly look at measuring uh, distance here. Uh, you can measure uh, both area and straight line distance. And then you can choose the uh, unit type. So let's choose uh, uh, feet first. And then you click on the measurement tool. And each time you click, it'll give a length segment for that click. So I'm just gonna click once. And it gives me a distance of uh, 2,121 feet between uh, North Campus and uh, the entry, uh, probably just about where the uh, entry box is. And you can actually keep drawing segments and getting uh, lengths, which you'd have to write down each time and then double click to end. Or you can do area. And uh, let's do this in square meters. And let's, so uh, what you can do, so I'm gonna, each click is a change of direction. So I'm gonna click once. And I'm gonna follow roughly what the outline of the campus here is. I assume that's, the, the campus boundary. I've actually got that data set somewhere. And this isn't hugely exact, but it's not bad for quick estimates of area. So if you want to find the rough acreage or square feet or whatever 
unit distance you want, you can use this tool here. Come around. And there you go, you get a filled in area of 46, four and six. This, this print is too tiny for, for an aging uh, instructor. <laughs> anyway, uh, 468,569 square meters. Uh, you can also look at that in square miles. It's 0.18 square miles. And so you can just cycle through and get the different uh, uh, size area. Okay, I think we'll call this one. Uh, here is the exercise. No, that's my email. And I'll leave this on for just a little bit here. Uh, those of you playing at home can take a screenshot of it. Um, and those of you in the class, I'll post this uh, in the Canvas uh, uh, files area. And tomorrow, I will do GPX tracks. OK, thanks for uh, being here. And uh, questions or comments, anything, send me, send me an email. Okay.